So we once again began by creating a new R script by hitting Control Shift N or by going to File New File R script rather than writing down in the console. So um, the first new thing that we see in Workshop 3 is the sequence function. So in Workshop 2 we saw the colon operator um, look, which looks something like this where it would take the it would create a sequence of the first value to the uh, value after the colon in steps of one. But let's say you didn't want um, to have exactly steps of one. Then you can use the sequence function. So the arguments that this function takes are from, so let's say from two, and then the next argument is two, let's say 10, and by equals three. So if we run this by hitting Control enter on Windows, we see that it started at 2, increased by 3 each time, and it stopped as soon as um, it got bigger than the number that we set for 2. So it didn't output 11 because 11 is greater than 10. Um, the next function that we saw in Workshop 3 is the sample function. So if you want to create a random sample, you can do that using the sample function. So let's take a look at the documentation for sample by uh, typing question mark and the name of the function inside the console. So if we do this, it'll tell us the arguments that, um, that a given function takes. So um, let's say we wanted to uh, create, um, we wanted to roll a dice and we wanted to roll, um, we wanted to roll five dice. So a dice has six sides, so what we're going to be sampling from is the numbers one to six. Uh, we want to roll five times, so the size equals five. And replacement just means can you have the same value more than once. So if we're rolling five times, are we allowed to get, theoretically, the number three five times, or do we have to get each number only once? So if we say that replacement equals true, um, that means that we can get the same number more than once. So if we run this, um, we can see that we rolled five dice and these are the numbers we got and we got the number six twice because we said that replacement is true. Um, so this would be a good time to talk about the which function. So let's say we wanted to know um, how many sixes we just rolled in that, in that last dice roll. Then we can use the which function to tell us which positions in this vector resulted in the number that we're talking about. So which, well first we're going to have to um, save this as a variable because we're not going to be able to um, do anything with it otherwise. So if we rerun this we're actually going to see we'll get a different value for dice roll than what we had the first time. So now this is what we, we got. Um, so let's say we wanted to know how many fours we rolled. Then we could say which dice roll um, equals the number four. So when we have these two equal signs, um, it's doing a comparison. So this function call is going to output a logical value. So it's either going to say, or sorry, not the function call, but this part is going to go through and look at each element and it's going to say true or false that that element is equal to four. And then when we put it inside the which function, the which function is going to tell us which positions were the number four. So this, if I run this line of code here, it should tell us that no, positions number one, uh, four, and five resulted in the number four. Now if I wanted to know how many of them were fours, I can just wrap this entire thing inside the function length. and it tells me that three of them were number fours. So the next thing that we talked about were, um, was a new data type in R called the matrix. Um, so, so far we've seen just regular old, uh, regular old variables and then we saw vectors and now we're going to see a matrix. So that's basically, like the easiest way to think about it is that it's a table. Um, so let's say I wanted to have the values 1 to 9 spread across three rows and three columns. So the way that I could do that is um, pick a variable name to store it as. 
and then use the matrix function. And the first argument is going to be the data that you want to go inside the matrix. So for us, that's the numbers 1 to 9. So there's a couple ways I could do it. I could do 1 to 9, or I could do concatenate of 1, 2, blah, blah, blah. Um, but obviously the easiest way is 1 to 9. And then uh, the next argument that it's going to take, you can just check down here to be sure. The next argument um, that it takes is n row. So that uh, is asking how many rows do we want in our matrix? So we said we wanted three rows and three columns. So our n row is three, and then our n call is also three. And this last argument here, by row. Um, so by row can take on the value of either true or false. So for us, um, let's put it as true because as we can see here, false is the default. So basically, let's, let's run this and see what it looks like. So if I type down here F, this is what we get. So it filled it in, um, it filled the numbers row by row. If I did the same thing and replaced this with by row equals false, and I run that, then I'll see that it, it actually filled them column by column. So if you don't put in the uh, by row equals true, then by default, it will, sit, it will um, do it by column. So that's just something to keep in mind. And then the last thing that we talked about is subsetting in a matrix. So if we look down here, we can see that there are these weird um, little subsetting things with commas. So it's basically just um, telling you the row number and the, and the column number. So if we look at the number eight, it is in um, row two and column three. So the first number refers to the row and the second number refers to the column. So we can, um, so if we wanted to uh, output that number eight, then what we could do is F at position two, three, and that's eight. Um, and then one other important thing to mention is that matrices behave a lot like vectors. Um, and one of those ways is that you can only have one uh, type, one class inside a matrix. So again, if you were to store some numbers and some characters, everything would get converted to a character. And one last thing uh, which I forgot to mention is we talked about advanced subsetting. So in the second workshop, we talked about how to look at um, like a certain a certain element of a vector. So, for example, if we wanted to see the like the third element of dice roll, uh, we see that that's a one. But what if we wanted to know? Um, let's look at what dice roll looks like again. Uh, what if we wanted to know the numbers that were higher than three? Then we could actually put that inside these square back brackets. So what this is going to do is it's going to go through and look at um, each element in the vector individually and determine uh, whether or not each one is greater than three. So if we do this, um, we see that it uh, spit out all the values which were greater than three.